this video, we are gonna start building the next section of our skate website. And that's gonna be this part right down here. So you can see that we have a transition from the dark section back over to the light section. And then we've got three images here with a button underneath each one. Now, let's go ahead and inspect the element so we can see a little bit what's going on under the hood here and how we've structured our rows and columns. And the reason why I do this is because it's, uh, it's good for you to get a visualization of how these rows and columns are working together. That way when you start building your own websites or your own web applications, when you look at your mockups, you can start visualizing how you're gonna start structuring rows and columns and if there's gonna be more rows and columns nested inside of other columns, all right? So starting from the top here, we've got this uh, section light. This just you know makes the transition from the dark section into the light one. And then I've started it off with a row that spans the width of the entire viewport in addition to a column that takes up the entire viewport. And then inside of this column, I've added another row that takes up the entire width of the viewport. And you can see that I've got these three columns that I've added inside of here. Now let's dive into one of these columns and see how we've uh, laid out the grid system. All right, so in the first column, we've got a column with a four. All right, and then we've slapped a uh, an image in here right in the middle, we've centered it. And then underneath the image, I've actually created a new row. And then inside of that row, I've created a column class that has the full width of 12. And then I slapped my button in there and centered it. All right, so that's how we're gonna be uh, structuring this. Um, and this is gonna give you a vis visualization of how this works. So let's go ahead and dive in to building this thing out. All right, so back over to our text editor. Um, we're going to be building this uh, section right under the section that had all of our text, okay? So if you come down to, to around line 114 here, um, we've got the row with our button for the uh, get cool stuff that triggers our modal, right? So right underneath uh, this row, actually let's make sure that we're completely out of the section. So I'm gonna highlight section dark. All right, so we're actually one down right here. So we're outside of the section dark and we're going to uh, add our wrapper for the section light. So add a div class of section light. All right, and then close that off. And then inside of here is where we're gonna start adding all of our content. And make sure that you're not working within the modal stuff. Remember, the modal uh, components, elements, we're putting down at the bottom of our page. All right, so we're going to start this off with the div class of row. Open this up. And then remember, we have a column inside of here that is going to take up the entire width. And I want that to take up the entire viewport at all times. So we're going to do a column width of 12 at the small state. All right. Perfect. And then inside of here, this is where we're going to start adding our content. So go ahead and create another uh, row. And then we're going to add a column width of four. So we've got three images we're working with, doing some quick math. Um, 12 divided by three is four. So we're going to make these equal columns. So go ahead and add a div class of uh, four. And remember, we want these images to stack on each other when it's in a mobile state. So go ahead and create the mobile state first. Take up the full viewport. And then we're gonna go ahead and say a uh, column uh, large this time. Let's, 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 let's use a large uh, this time instead of a medium. All right, just mix it up just a little bit. So we're saying anything from a small to a medium, we're gonna do 12 and anything from a large and to an extra large, we're setting a column with a four. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add our first image, all right? And then be sure to add the bootstrap class, the image fluid, and remember the image fluid is going to put a width of 100% and a height of auto on our image, so that way as the viewport changes sizes, our image is going to flex appropriately. And then go ahead and add uh, the source. And it's going to be in the assets folder. And then we're going to be doing the kickflip uh, JPEG here. And then you, we can go ahead and close that off. And then save it. And let's launch this and see how it's looking. 
All right, perfect. So we've got an image in here and it needs to be centered inside of its column. So if we inspect the element here, let me come down here so we can see our image. So you can see that we've got our first column with a four and then we've got an image in here. And remember, everything stacks from left to right. So we just need to go ahead and center this within the column with a four. And one thing to do, if you want to use different images, uh, feel free to. And I have gone ahead and sized all these images appropriately so it looks good on the, on the website. Same with these images here. And you may be starting out with an image that is larger, but remember there's a trick that you can do. So on your image, you can actually add your own temporary class to it, like test or size, and then control the width of the image to control the size, right? And then if I had this huge image and I wanted it to be like, I don't know, 60% of its actual size, um, I would add that in CSS to the temporary class I created. And then once the image is the size you want, um, go ahead and on the image when it's selected, scroll down to the very bottom and now you've got dimensions all right and then you can take that image throw it in like preview or photoshop um, whatever uh, photo program that you have and you can go ahead and resize and crop the image as you need so this image was huge and then i got it down to 50 percent of the size that i wanted which turned out to be 315 by 315 pixels all right, so again, just another tip and trick how you can get your images to be resized to work with your website. All right, let's go ahead and close that and come back over to your text editor and let's add another class to this so we can get this image to center. And I'm just gonna call this um, image center. Wow, there we go, all right. And then right over here, we can add the class Man, <clears throat> let's uh, get type in correctly here. And then remember to center things, we've always just uh, put it in a display of block and then added that margin of auto. All right, so save that. Let's come back over to the browser, refresh it. And let's see, that isn't working. So let's come back and see if we have a typo or what we got to do here. Actually, as I'm looking at this, see my index file? It has the dot on it. It means I haven't saved it. So it probably didn't uh, save the class that I had because everything looks great. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh and there it is. <laughs> uh, just had to save my uh, HTML file so those uh, so that class would save in there. So perfect, so pretty easy. Um, let's go ahead and create the next row uh, with the button in it. All right, so let's see, we've got our column class and we want this to stay within the uh, same row and we actually want it to stay within the same column so right under the image, go ahead and press enter, and we're gonna add our own row, all right? And we've got that, open it up, and we're gonna add a button here. All right, and so this is gonna be a button of type button, all right? And then let's go ahead and add some of Bootstrap's uh, classes here. So we're gonna go ahead and add uh, BTN, and BTN large, and then we're gonna make our own uh, button class here so that it can be uh, centered. So let's call this the um, BTN BTN center uh, works. We're going to add some styling to this class and then also make it make sure that it centers our button as well. So we've got the row up oh, my bad you guys I gotta add the uh, the column here right because you can't have because columns can only be an immediate child of a row. That's the only uh, immediate child a row can have and we were going to make this a full width of 12 okay so go ahead and cut the closing div tag and go ahead and close the button and then right underneath the button go ahead and paste that div tag there okay so we've got our uh, row with a column width of four we've got our image uh, in there and then right underneath the image we have created a row with a column width that takes up the entire width. And remember, it's taken up the entire width of a column four. So anytime, remember when we put a column inside of a column, regardless of what the parent column width is, for us, that child column 
is always going to reset and give us the full grid system, a full uh, 12 columns that we can work with. All right, and then we've got our button in here. All right, so let's uh, save that and just make sure that we've got our uh, button showing up. Go ahead and refresh the page. And we do, we just need to add some text, uh, change the size of this, and uh, get it centered. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and in our button, just type kickflip. This is our kickflip image. And let's go create a class here. I'm going to do uh, BTN center. And then let's see, we are going to put a display of block on here. And let's add our margin of auto to get it to be centered. And for fun, in our button, why don't we just use one of Bootstrap's classes uh, this time to color our button. And we can do that by adding their BTN danger. And this is going to give our button kind of like a red color. All right. So we've got the uh, BTN center, the margin of auto. Let's go ahead and check that out. So come over to uh, the browser. Perfect. So we've got this button in here. Um, kick flip. It's a nice large button and it's just snugged up to the top here. So, and obviously the width isn't taking up um, right underneath the image. So we know that we want to add some space between the image and the button. So we're going to add some margin. And remember, let's think ahead. We've got a footer that's going to be down here. And we want to make sure that our button pushes some distance between the, the footer as well. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, come back to this. And we'll add a margin top. And let's add like 15 pixels. Okay. And then right underneath this, let's add a margin bottom. And we'll add. I don't know, like 20 pixels. Okay, cool. So notice how we used a margin auto in here, and we can also use other margin classes. So this margin auto is just helping us out in the sense that it's centering our button, and then we can go and add additional margins on top of that uh, to the top and bottom. All right, so go ahead and save that, and uh, let's come back here. Cool, so now we've got some distance uh, between the image and the button, but let's think about how we want to make this to be full width. Well, right now, we're using uh, Bootstrap's BTN class, which is adding the rounded corners and the padding around the word kickflip. So the button is actually based on size because of the word kickflip and the padding that Bootstrap has added for us. So we've got a column with the four, um, we can actually go ahead and put a width on this so it can take up the uh, width of its element. All right, so back into our text editor, let's try an experiment here. We've got a column width of four, and let's say we just want this button to take up 100% of its element, which is a column width of four. Let's find out what happens here. All right, coming back, refreshing. Holy Moses, this button is way too big. And it's like, well, why is this happening? Well, it's because this is taking up the entire column width of four, whereas we have a smaller image um, that is centered, uh, that is, you know, dispersing the extra space on the side. So we've got our image here, which is great. And then we've got this uh, row down here. We've got, we have a column width of 12, which we set, right? And then our button is taking up the full element of this. So in this case, we could actually help control the width of this button um, by lowering the width percentage. So let's kind of narrow this down to around 50%. Let's, because uh, 50% is going to be about half of this button here, and that looks like it might be about the width of our image. So back over to brackets. Let's go ahead and change this to a width of 50. Save it so our changes take place. And let's go ahead and refresh that. So that looks a lot better. We've got the margin of auto in here, so it's centering it. But we've get, got just a tiny bit of space here on the sides. Um, and I want this button to take up uh, the width of the picture. So let's just bump up that width just a hair. And let's just throw it up to like a 54%. 
and go ahead and refresh that and that's looking great. Awesome, so the button looks a lot better. All we need to do is build the other three columns here and with the width of 54%, if we think about this, as the viewport changes sizes and as our image and button shrink down to fit the viewport, this button is always gonna have a 54% width of its viewport. Now either A, we could leave it like that and let the button shrink underneath the image, or B, we could create a media query that says, hey, when, this, uh, when the viewport reaches a mobile state, um, go ahead and change the button width to 100%, so that way it fits underneath the image. So let's, uh, let's look how this resizes here. And you can see that the button is still taking up that 54%, which, you know what? I think it actually looks pretty good. It looks fine. All right, so let's build the other three columns here. So back over to our text editor. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and grab the, let's see, it's the column with the four here. So we can see it's opening and closing div tag. Go ahead and copy this and paste it two more times to build the other two columns. Now, I could have gone out and written this from hand, <laughs> from scratch, but what I like to do is when I'm working with columns of equal widths, I like, I like to build the structure of the first column, and that's if all the columns are going to have the same structure. I like to build the structure of the first column, and then I can go and paste it uh, to fill up the rest of the width of the 12 columns, and then change the content inside of it how I need to. So, um, in this one, we're going to change the image. So you can actually just delete kickflip and the forward slash, add the forward slash again. And this one is going to be our uh, 360 flip, which is the top image here. And then the text inside of here. Oh, guys, I'm changing the wrong one. Um, I'm just going to command Z and put that back to the kickflip. <clears throat> okay, we're working in the uh, second column here. My bad. All right, so same thing. Go ahead and delete kickflip and the forward slash in the second column. Add that uh, forward slash again, and then select the 360 flip. And then inside here, go ahead and write in 360 flip. Going to put a lowercase l there. And then um, in this last column, go ahead and delete the image and the forward slash. Put the forward slash again, and we're going to grab the uh, image BS crook. That stands for a backside crook, one of my favorite grinds. All right, and then we'll just come in here and do a backside crook. <clears throat> awesome. So let's go ahead and make sure that is saved and refresh. And there it is. We've uh, duplicated those columns. Our images are centered. Our buttons look great. And then as the viewport shrinks, when we come down here, because we put that row with the column inside of our original column, we've now got the images and buttons properly stacking on top of each other. So that is a wrap for this video. Um, everything's looking really, really cool. Totally digging this uh, skate website. Let's move on.